Oh, before we come to the Lord's table, I thought that looking at the Passover on a Sunday morning was such a good opportunity. I know preachers, like, they always want to say more than they say in a sermon. So this is me fitting in even more that I wanted to say. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a perk of the job, I suppose. But I, I felt it was an opportunity in coming to the Lord's table just to think about the Passover and the significance of it. And I want to speak to you about the First Supper, the Last Supper and the Lord's Supper. I want to see the connections uh, between Christ and the New Covenant and the Passover meal. A lot of what I say is not going to be, um, uh, uh, what's the words, uh, new to me. Um, a lot of this coming from a really helpful, clear book uh, that was published a few years ago, Echoes of Exodus. Um, Alistair Roberts and Andrew Wilson, very helpful books, in thinking through some biblical themes. So uh, leaning heavily on them, but uh, looking at the connections between the Passover and the Last Supper. First, I, I want to tell you about a tradition and a box of cornflakes. Uh, a few years ago, actually a couple of years ago, it was New Year's Day. And we decided as a family to walk uh, not far from here uh, to spa because we needed to get a box of cornflakes. So we all went out and I went and got a box of cornflakes. I came out holding the box of cornflakes. And then we said, oh, well, we're out anyway. Let's go for a walk. So we walked around the village boundaries. And uh, uh, I can't remember who it was. Daddy, why are you holding a box of cornflakes? To which I said... Well, it's traditional in Welsh culture on the first day of the year to walk the parish boundary with a box of cornflakes, to which everybody looked at me and said, don't be daft. Which, of course, there's all kinds of Welsh traditions, aren't there? Every culture has its traditions. But you can't just, skinny English boat, come up with a tradition and make one up. You can't enforce yourself on hundreds of years of traditions. Traditions and memory is important. Memory is a huge thing, isn't it? When you remember something so powerful because it brings you to that moment. Uh, I suppose as you get older, you remember things more. You, you get a sense, you can taste, you can feel being there. Shared memories. Uh, important times where groups of people remember something. A jubilee, remembering 70 years, all that that means. Uh, cultural memories. Things that we remember. It's really, really interesting that in Exodus 12 to 13, as soon as the Passover mentions, the Lord is memorialising it. The intention was that this would be something that would be handed down from generation to a generation, a, 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 a liturgy, a cultural marker, something that shaped them as a community the Passover lamb, the, the breads. And uh, Jewish people across the years, even till now, uh, whatever is happening, whatever has happened in their lives and culture, there's certain things they remember, the, the breads, a cup of wine, certain words, certain songs, bitter herbs, taking them back, uh, memory. And in the book of Deuteronomy, um, it talks about how when your children ask you, why are you doing this? And even generations after, they say, it's because of what the Lord did for me in Egypt. It's, it's both corporate and it's personal. A huge tradition, something that aids the memory, that brings you back. But a, a recognition that as God's people, Israel, were Exodus people. They were Passover People set apart for the Lord by the death of the Lamb. A huge, huge significance. Which is why it is absolutely amazing in the upper room. On the first day of unleavened breads. Where they take part in which is a, a Passover meal in the upper room. Jesus Christ thrusts himself on centuries of tradition. And says, and it's so powerful, isn't it? Um, Take, eat, this is my body of the unleavened bread and of the cup of blessing. This is the blood of the covenants. Uh, it is a huge thing. It's not 
like some English Wally with a box of cornflakes saying, I'm making up a new tradition. It is, is deep because Jesus is not saying, oh, I picture the Passover a little bit. Or if you want to understand the cross, you could get some significance from the Passover. There's some parallels. He's saying this is what it's always been about. This is what the Passover is. It was always pointing to me. As Christians, we believe that the old covenants was always going to give way to the new covenant. Christ uh, brings this light back into the Old Testament. There's light shed forward. It all it was all pointing to Christ. This is what it is about. And so with the Passover, there were two elements. There was the firstborn son. So your firstborn son. How would you know that all was right with you? And the angel of uh, the uh, the um, the angel of the Lord, uh, the Lord passing through with the plague of judgments. How would you know that all was OK? Well, if you had a living firstborn son, you know that you were right. And you knew that because of the death of a lamb, a, a spotless lamb. A death had happened. Death in the place of the firstborn son. The miracle of Jesus Christ is that he is both. He is the living firstborn son, risen from the dead, the firstborn from the dead, as Paul calls him, Colossians chapter one. And he is the Passover lamb, killed in the darkness, passing through the fire, the blood of Christ, the one who takes our place. And so there's huge parallels and huge connections. And Jesus then institutes the Lord's Supper. It's the fulfilment of the Passover, broken bread, poured out wine. So the same implications, memory, taking ourselves back. Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. I just want to read out just a paragraph from uh, Wilson and Roberts. It really made me think, and I'm just going to expand on it as I go, because the significance of the Passover. So we've jumped to the New Testament. Jesus is that Passover lamb. Let's jump back to Exodus 12 and just think. It says here, shelves could be filled with books on the significance of Passover and probably have me been. In a number of ways, the Passover is an obvious prelude to the work of Christ. It's about redemption from slavery by the blood of a lamb. It's about a sacrifice which passes through the fire and saves people from death when everyone around them is facing judgments. It's layers of what the Passover means and its gospel significance. It's about the power of faith worked out through obedience. So the people had to apply the blood to their lives. They had to uh, put it on the doorpost. It was about faith and obedience. Israelite families were not saved by their personal godliness that night or even by the amount of confidence they had in God. They were saved simply by the fact that the blood was over their house. And they talk about some, a number of less obvious Christian meanings in the Passover. So it's about purity. There's a spotless lamb, about leaven being removed, a seven day festival about hyssop dipped in blood. So there's an idea with the Passover that there's purity that they're purified brought near as a nation to serve the lords the passover was about suffering that had bitter herbs uh, to remind them of the way things were of their slavery there's a bitterness it's about the passover was about unity what i love about the passover meal was like the fact that it was like a well, you, you get Jubilee street parties. It's a bit like that. Well, look, there's this old, uh, there's this family who can't afford a Passover lamb. Well, they've got a, a, a knock on the pe- people next door. And it's, it's about eating with your neighbour. It's about the corporate people of God feasting together and looking to God's redemption together. It's about the re- memory, remembering what has happened. And it's about the blessing of the nations a mixed multitude leaving Israel. So there's this, all these resonances happening in the Passover. And those are happening in the Lord's Supper, changed into a different key. But the Lord's Supper is about, first of all, a lamb without spot 
or blemish. It is about purity. We've been purified, brought near to the people of of the Lord. It's about community. It's a communal meal. We recognise each other as we eat and drink. It, It is about suffering as well. With the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, there's sadness in the Last Supper, the betrayal of Judas. When we take the bread and wine and remember Jesus, we remember the suffering of this life. Glory to come. Exodus, people. It's a meal of unity and memory. I was really helped by a book by Steve Levy in which he, he said, I think he got it from another preacher, but I thought it was great. When we, when we come to the Lord's table, we look back to the cross. We look up to where Jesus is now. We look around at each other as the people of God and we look forwards to Christ's coming. So the Lord's Supper, the bread and wine, it's not a Passover. It's a fulfilled Passover that the Lord has given us. It's full of resonance and it is about memory. And Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Now, you could fill books and books and books and blogs and blogs and blogs about all the ways Christians fall out about the Lord's Supper. Uh, We've just been through the COVID pandemic and suddenly that was intensely theological. We do it, do it on Zoom, do we do not? And there are rights and wrongs about those things. We want to apply carefully what the Bible says. And yet at the heart, do this in remembrance of me. The Lord's Supper is about Christ and his people who he is and what he's done. It is the God's ordained, the God's ordained means of keeping the gospel, the atoning blood of Christ central in the local church. Very often, sometimes we say those words, don't we? Examine yourself to make sure if you, if you're, um, if we're worthy to, to enter. And I, we can misapply those words and we can come to the Lord's table just feeling unworthy and examine ourselves and who is worthy enough to take part in the bread and wine and and we turn in on ourselves when actually the Lord's Supper is about looking out of ourselves to Christ. It's finished work. If you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're repenting, whatever it is, whatever kind of week you've had, come and look to Christ. We look up to Christ and we look around at each other. Do this in remembrance of me. It must be amazing to be part of a long tradition when you take part in something that goes back centuries, part of something. And when we take part in the Lord's Supper, we're saying, people all over the world, we are part of something big and we are part of something new, something that lasts forever. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we sing before we come to the Lord's Supper? 424, here is love. Vast as the ocean, who his love will not remember, who can cease to sing his praise.